Hey, Scotty here from the New Zealand American Fifth Wheel and Travel Trailer Group. Uh, just let you know that we've actually got our uh, unit up on the market. Uh, we're going to be selling it to upgrade to a larger unit. Uh, what we have here is a Rockwood 2703WS, a 2018 model with a few modifications. Um, basically, yeah, she's been a good unit. Uh, in the sale, it actually comes with the uh, Anderson weight distribution hitch, which is over here. The whole setup, it's quite easy. It stays like that, and the actual hitch stays on the tow vehicle itself, and it detaches quite easily. Uh, as you can see, the usual uh, LPG bottle storage in there. It has the electric tongue jack, which also has a difference that I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, one battery just up here, uh, it's just um, a little 75 amp hour uh, AGM battery in the unit, but there is another battery inside the unit to help supply more power, and that's a 130 amp hour AGM battery as well. Um, the storage in it, it's pretty good. It's not quite the pass-through storage like on some units, but it's pretty damn close. And we've got a whole stack of our stuff in there. We've got about three fold-out tables. <laughs> we've got our little run portable rundown tank that we use uh, for getting rid of our wastewater and stuff. Plus, we've got our barbecue in there. We've got our chairs in there, and we store our empty water bottles and that in there. Plus a couple other bits and pieces but there's just plenty of storage and that and the traditional uh, slam lock and a little resident spider that likes to hang around. Now if we go further along, one of the modifications I've done is I've actually incorporated some uh, tubes that actually go right through to the other side so you know you can carry your stinky slinkies and that in there. Uh, or tent poles or anything like that. I've got them for uh, fishing rods, you know, got to do like the old surf casting, so it's a good place to put the uh, surf casting rods. But to point out, the ties have been changed because these units, as you probably know, and when you research on the American sites, they talk about China bomb ties, the castle rocks. Yes, this unit did come with castle rocks, but uh, about six months ago, we've changed them and put on uh, quality Bridgestone uh, commercial tyres. And they've only done about 500 kilometres on them whatsoever. So perfect, perfect tread. And that, and been a great tyre actually. You actually notice the unit travels a lot better because it's got the stiffer sidewalls. So you get less sway with it. Um, this was imported by uh, Sun Marketing which is has the exclusive uh, um, galvanized chassis which has been really handy particularly if you like going along you know doing your traveling and being on the beach side the galvanized chassis comes in perfect to help reduce that rust problem we've got another storage cabinet here and uh, it's got the magnetic latch that helps hold up your uh, latches we just store whatever, um, you know, just got like, we've got our little uh, portable fold out uh, clothesline here that sits in there perfectly. Plus you can have the uh, electrical lead stored in there and whatever other bits and pieces, your tools, anything like that. But that actually uh, is a storage unit underneath the dinette setting. So you can access from the inside as well at either side. Coming here, a round of the crash bar. Now normally the spare tyre is mounted there, but it couldn't be when we had the uh, bike rack installed. Mel and I have done nothing but travelling with this, carrying our two bikes, and with it mounted on the wall like that, had no problems whatsoever. Uh, it carries two bikes. I wouldn't suggest carrying e-bikes with it unless you reinforce and uh, support the underside as it comes down. So that comes down there, that ties it on there, but
but if you're going to do e-bikes I would suggest making some sort of brace to help support there to the bar there but normal bikes like Mel and myself we you know, had the mountain bikes and that and it was no troubles whatsoever but as you can see it's a bit different to other units out there um, another thing I did not personally like the stop tail lights that came with it um, they just didn't illuminate all that well so I actually changed it to having these you also give it a bit of a look as well on both sides now every single one of those acts as a stop tail light in other words it will be under normal going along when you're going along and you've got your lights on every single one of these lights up as a tail light but as soon as your brake light comes on they all illuminate brighter and then when you put your indicator on on the side that's being indicated it actually changes to amber and does that uh, directional flash and, that, and that's on the center ones on either side uh, I also and that's all LED I also added reverse lights and their LED spotlights so it helps illuminate the rear when you're reversing to help illuminate if you have to do it at night and they really light up behind you really well um, but also there's another feature of those I'll uh, explain a little bit later but that there and also as you can see I've got another storage tube here with the fishing rods and stuff like that and that's just how it's held but you just got to remember this is made of uh, PVC plastic and I just wrapped it in an artificial carbon fiber wrap so it's not designed to have anything like support anything or anything like that because it's just straight out plastic with bracing and screwed to here if you're going to strap anything down use the steel steel beam there now they're all frameless windows they all open up inside as you can see just like this and that allow the air and then you come around to this side and that's where you hook up uh, your mains power and that for your 240 and all the lights they're all LED all the slide outs have slide out toppers on them so it helps stop uh, leaves and branches and bird droppings or anything like that going on to the uh, slide outs so they come out and it adds a good cover um, people have asked me are they noisy in the rain or the wind and my answer to that is no it's never troubled myself and my wife Mel she's a light sleeper and she's never complained about it at all uh, coming around as you can see got the good quality tires on it um, and then you come around to the sides and we have the outdoor shower if ha people haven't already seen this but for those who have never seen them quite handy you got hot you got cold it's quite good for I use it for when we go down to the beach a lot come back and you're able to hose the sand off your feet uh, washing your dogs hosing the salt off them giving them the wash down and if it's a bit on the cold side a little precious doesn't have to worry because we've got hot water supply in there plus it also has a little handy holder just like that now we have here um, this is a section where you're doing for flushing your system if you're in a cold climate you're going to be storing your unit and prone to freezing this is the uh, no actually I'm wrong sorry <laughs> this is actually the flush for the black tank the black tank itself has a shower system set up inside it you hook your hose up to that and it actually showers the inside of the black tank of the sewerage and then you flush it out as you're dumping That's your third slide out there. Now in here, basically we've got the controls. We've got the water pump there. We've got the valves for controlling that, for isolating if you choose to go onto city water. We've got the switch to 
turn on the mains 240 volt power to the heater for the water heater um, so there is two ways that this water gets heated either by gas or by 240 volt uh, power uh, also here one thing about another addition I put to this unit is it has an automatic self leveling system and it's brilliant and it was a kit I brought over and it's made by Lippet Industries in the States who makes 95% of all the chassis systems and slide out systems and everything like that for 95% of the trailers and fifth wheels that are made in the States. But I brought it over as a kit and part of that kit it actually came with all the instruction stickers and everything like that to mount it so I placed those there and uh, the control unit is mounted in there. And basically then you've got here your water fill for your fresh water tank you've got your city water connection so you don't have to use water in your tank and you actually if you've got a tap nearby plug straight up to that and it just supplies all the water you want and this, sorry no i got confused with the other one but this is the one where you do the uh, antifreeze uh, system through your pipe work to prevent freezing now part of the addition i did was the auto leveling system there's the controls for it there and also I set up some lights here now this switch here actually controls and now I mentioned to you before how the rear reverse lights come on when you reverse to help see while you're backing up well at night if you want you can actually turn them on and they will come on so you can see at night if you've got your uh, clothesline set up the back behind the unit you need to go and get the stuff off the line you can turn that light on and away it goes this one here their little floodlights I've set up to underneath down here to illuminate where the landing legs for the auto leveling system are going to land see it's lighting up the area I've set up uh, spotlights to light up that area on all four leveling points and that's the switch that controls it and then the third and final switch this one controls the nice fancy LED light that's up on the nose cone. Now coming around we have, uh, I've explained that one, yep, that section there. Now another thing with this leveling system, I've also incorporated a, uh, where you can get download a phone app and you can actually control the slide outs with your phone and the lights inside as well as your awning so when you pull up you can actually open the slide outs using your phone while walking around to make sure it's clearing everything and not going to hit something or strike so that way um, you know you don't end up smacking or damaging anything like that because you're right there as the slide out happens now what I'll do is Right, as you can see on my phone this is the control app for the system right I can uh, turn the lights on there the interior lights will turn on and the awning I can retract or extend it so if you have a look here goes the awning There's the wardrobe slide. Controlling it with the phone. Now the kitchen slide. This is all controlling by my phone. So you're able to walk around while it's opening just to make sure it's clear and everything. And that one's out. And we'll go around to the other front one.
here we are there. Go to walk around, check to make sure it's not going to hit anything. Make sure it's alright. And as you can see, the slide out toppers, great invention in my view. Never been a problem with them whatsoever. Uh, and when you're going in, when you pull the slide out inside, if you didn't have them, you're actually going to get leaves and that stuff dragged inside and ends up going inside your unit. So the slide topper actually, they work really well. Now, another feature on this unit that came, you actually have outdoor uh, power available. There is actually a shelf that clips onto here. And one thing Mel and I do, we use an air fryer quite a lot, magic invention. Um, so therefore you don't want your cooking smells like your bacon and your meats or your fries or anything like that. Creating a lot of smells inside, do it outside, under the awning, and set the air fryer up here, plugs into there, bobs your uncle. Now another little handy feature too is, I don't know about you, but Mel and I, we actually use the barbecue quite a lot. We've got a Weber, you know, just the, the 2000 size one, perfect. Uh, instead of doing the cooking on the stove and things like that and getting all those cooking smells going on inside, we actually use the Weber for quite a lot, you know, doing um, roasts, our cooking our steaks and things like that. And the handy thing is, instead of having pulling the Weber out and, and an extra uh, gas bottle for it separately, we've got a gas pipe where you hook the Weber up to that and that actually then gets its gas from the main supply at the front. Absolutely fantastic. And then, um, what else is there? Oh, it's got the uh, nice lighting that goes on inside, the LED lights up the top. You've got the outdoor speakers, so you can, uh, and that's connected onto zone three on the system. Uh, so you can put play your music outside. Um, basically, it. you've got the handle to help the older people, you know, get up, such as myself. come in and out just like that now I mentioned to you before it's I installed an automatic self-leveling system and the beauty of this system is it takes about three minutes to set up the unit after unhitching it from your vehicle now the way it works is you unhitch your vehicle and you use the tongue jack to raise it up off the vehicle and then you must move your vehicle away first and there's a reason why now basically once you set at that height, when you activate the automatic leveling system, it actually remembers that height. So when you go to pack it all up and fold the system away, it will automatically put it back to the height you had when you unhitched it from your vehicle. So you don't have to muck around making sure it's all high enough and everything like that. You can just back straight up to it and drop it straight down onto the vehicle. Now the way to operate this system is two ways. They could use the phone, which is on there, but you've got these controls. You press these two together to wake up the system. The little green light will come on, and then you hit auto level. That will start flashing. And away it goes. It will start dropping these front legs down first. And the whole point of that is, is to take the weight of the front of the unit before it starts retracting the uh, hitch leg. Now one little tip, do yourselves a favour, get a set of those, absolutely fantastic, to stiffen it up and also to help adjust the heights that are needed for this system to work efficiently. Now it's basically getting a rough level. As you can hear, it's balancing out either side, and now it's retracting the front. Now it's just lifting the leg up out of the way to a predetermined height. Now it's done, it's now 
seeing it, the legs are now taking the full weight. The legs are leveling it up at the front to get the front to rear level roughly in plumb. Now it will go to the rear. As you can see, it's going down on both sides. Right, it'll stop there. Now it's notice that the other side needs to be lowered more. It will automatically adjust to there and lower the other side down over there until it gets to a certain point. And then it starts working its way through the system to then start working on the perfect leveling. And it works front to back, back to front, side to side, and after it's leveled you find it actually gets to within 0 0.01 of a degree. And then if you, when it comes around, come around to the front. You'll hear it. It works little bits and pieces until it's doing the fine adjustment of the level. As it's going, and as it's doing its leveling, this will still be flashing. Right, and when it's finished uh, leveling and everything is all perfect, is when it'll go solid and stop flashing, then you know the system's ready. It's still doing its checks. It's adjusting at the front, at the back now. And it's now level. That's it, that's simple. And now in reverse, that's what the system does. And it's absolutely perfect, it helps take out a lot, it stabilizes the unit very well when walking around inside. And then basically in reverse, when you want to pack up and hook up your vehicle, you basically, like I said, you press the two buttons together to wake up the system. And then you hit hitch height. And when you do that, it will do everything in reverse and then set the uh, front hitch at the same height that you unhook the vehicle from and that's it that's that easy and basically we used to have the old system of the old scissor jacks here which over time if you look they're quite sad really they're all rusted and and they get bent and on the second trip that Mel and I had with it they were bending and twisting and there was a lot of movement in the in the unit um, with it, oh, I flagged this and then when I spotted the uh, system that was available from the state I couldn't help but grab it Mel thought, oh yeah, you're a gadget man, you always love gadgets hey, I installed the system and one thing I did, I got the big thumbs up from my wife on it because it's just so easy and it just made, a, you know caravanning or you know off exploring a lot easier and a lot simpler and it was just so much quicker less stress don't have to crank and things like that and the new spirit levels just leave it done well here we are inside our uh, 2703 WS um, just to touch base more on our auto leveling system and the uh, phone app control system for the slide outs and everything we also, what came with the auto leveling system was this control panel and had to install it. And basically you turn it on, it's like a little touchpad screen, which gives you access to all the controls uh, that are for this unit. The leveling system, lighting, awning, slides, and then you go into my RV and you've got owner's manuals and that listed in here you know, on how to use certain things like the pith wheels and 
Class C's and the ground control. There's a, there's a whole range of them. But we got uh, ground control 3, which is this system as well as the TT system. See, as you go on there, but we hit back and then back and then we'll go back home and we're back to the main screen there that's just one of those things I've never used it personally because yeah we've got the controls outside for the leveling system we've got um, off the phone app to use but that's there just in case and there's a couple of other features as well uh, and then just turn it off and then up here, your usual generic uh, controls. You got for your slide outs because there's three three slide out unit, and we've got the interior lighting off, and then on, and then the porch light that controls uh, the orange coloured light out under the awning, and then we've got the LED uh, lights that appear under the awning that light it up, and it's fantastic actually. Uh, we'll show you that one a little bit later, and then we've got this one here. For these lights here uh, they did have lampshades on them but they were down this low and I kept hitting my head on them and I found them quite a nuisance so I took them off and just left them like that um, the new owners they may find a nice little light shade that can go onto it but I found that's just the right head height for me and I'm not a tall fella at all by any means but I just found the, the standard shades were a pain in the backside uh, then you got your step and this one here that actually operates a light on the far side of the unit outside um, just to illuminate they also call it an um, intruder alert light don't know why but that's what they call it and uh, also you've got your switch for extending the awning in and out here controls for the water pump to switch it on and off and then same here you've got the water heating you can uh, switch it on and off and as well as when you're boondocking and you don't have power hooked up, you switch that on and that will then tell the heater for the water, use the gas. And then you just get the gas hot water. And then up here, that's for the Wi-Fi Ranger. I've tried it out. It's not that great, to be honest. Um, you find it so much easier. Just use your mobile phone if you want to have internet connection and things like that. Yes, it can pick up campground uh, Wi-Fi's and things like that, but I just found it a hindrance with today's technology with mobile phones um, and, the, and the download speeds you get, I find this becomes obsolete. It's sort of old technology nowadays, but it's, it's there. Now we'll move on through. We've got cupboards down here underneath. That's where we store a bulk of our stuff for the kitchen, but also under here, just at the back there is the control for the solar system just down there and at the back of this wall here is where that 130 amp AGM uh, house battery is stored over the center of the axles to help try and keep the weight off the front as you're towing and then you got the usual here's the pantry in here good size pantry Mel and I haven't found it hindering at all uh, we've cleaned out the stuff since our last travel but we haven't been wanting for space at all in fact we've got more space than we've ever needed but it's actually not a bad pantry at all um, it may seem a little bit funny but we've never encountered any problems ergonomically at all down here there are cupboards that can be turned into cupboards but right now they are actually fixed you can't open them uh, mainly because you can access the gas line for uh, the portable barbecue as well as uh, the electrics for the clearance lights on that side but hey it's already got hinges on there you can take that one off put a doorknob on there a door clicker to hold it in place and you can turn that into covers if you so choose but like i say there's plenty of storage space never needed to use it at all here's a good linen cupboard now it has access two ways one from the bathroom into here in this door here as well as here now we we generally just keep our vacuum cleaner and things like that but it also has facilities for hanging up big jackets and uh, and the like uh, obviously use a choice on that uh, but that's that's what we did on that but a good size cupboard nonetheless and down here is the uh, 
main electrical system for the unit. The 12 volt DC side is here with all the fuses. If a fuse blows, a little red light will appear next to the fuse that is blowing. Uh, very handy. Uh, this is a rough roughness, but basically if you do blow a fuse, a little red light will come up alongside it. Pull the fuse out, put a new one in. Bob's your uncle, the red light turns off when it's working. Here is for your 12 volts, uh, your 24, two, sorry, 240 volt system. Uh, when you plug in, you've got the three separate things and you've got your mains. Nice and easy. Now I'll come on through. Oh, we've got the dinette. This table, <laughs> if you look up on the forums, everyone says the same thing. They wrestle with this table to get it up and down to turn it into a bed. Our grandkids, uh, when they come with us, they love sleeping. They were, you know, they're only little, little ones. We turn that into a bed. They end up sleeping there, and they absolutely love it. Uh, the table, yeah, it's a bit difficult, but not that bad. Oh, and by the way, that's the uh, all the documentation for this unit, all the gas certifications, the electrical certificate. Uh, everything to do with this unit and its accessories is all in this uh, packet there. Now to get it in and out, you want to have these sides here facing yourself. Now you've got to wrestle with it a little bit. Or find, put your foot on the sucker. You've got to push it. Oh, hang on. No, that's right. There's a little red, little yellow thing. There. You've got to pull it like that. And you pull towards yourself, and down it goes, like so. And then you set it up to sit on top of those four lugs. And then you use the back uh, swabs there, lay it across there. And it makes a decent sized bed for the grandkids. And not one of them complained of being uncomfortable, so that's, that's a good thing. Same thing, when you pull it out, you grab it, rest your foot on the base, pull it forward towards you. And then up it comes and it clicks in. Just remember that little yellow thing there. You know, so pull what, forward. What you and forgot? It clicks in. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's it's not a bad dinette. You know, Mel and I have always used it uh, on the cold nights when we don't eat outside. Uh, we will set up here, have our glass of wine. I'll do the cooking of the steaks and then out on the barbecue, bring it back in. And Mel's got the nice salads set up here, all done, you know. And it's not, not a bad dinette. Uh, four people's a bit of a squeeze. Three's not too bad. Two's very comfortable. I haven't found that being a problem at all. Set up the entertainment center there. That's a 43-inch uh, TV there. Sadly, that does not come with the unit. Because uh, I've got a special setup. But... The bracket there to mount a TV is will be on the wall ready for a new TV to put be put on. You've got the entertainment system here. You can turn it on. There are the zones I was telling you about. Zone one is for the speaker system in here. It's got the uh, speaker bar there. Plus down in the bottom, right at the back, there's actually a subwoofer mounted there. So you can annoy your neighbours and that if you really want to crank the sounds up. But anyway, you got zone one. That's for in here. The zone two is actually sending the sound to the bedroom. You actually got two speakers set up in the bedroom, so it's not too bad. And then zone three, like I explained earlier, there for the two speakers outside. You've got uh, audio uh, for the TV going through there. The DVD player in this, unfortunately, being an American unit, we do suffer the problem of our region DVDs do not play in this unit. But the way Mel and I got a way, uh, way around it is we actually bought a PlayStation not to play games, but actually to play DVDs, picked up a second-hand one, plug it into the front here in the uh, HDMI port, and away you go. You can play your videos up onto the TV or your DVDs. And you've even got Bluetooth hookup where you can actually pipe your own music, like your Spotify and things like that. Uh, another thing this unit comes with, we actually, it does come fitted with an automatic uh, satellite dish. And basically the unit is set up in there. Excuse all the rubbish and stuff like that. Yes, 
This stuff does not come with the unit, unfortunately, but this one does. And that's the unit there that controls the satellite and will actually automatically write itself up and then lock onto the satellites and away you go. And it takes about two to three minutes for it to do its job. And then bingo, it tunes in and watch TV. You don't have to do the old manual in trying to get the signal nice and straight and all that sort of thing. Nice and easy. That's what this unit comes with. Plenty of storage, all up there, all up here. Down the bottom here is when I was talking about earlier how the outside uh, locker you can actually access to underneath the dinette. That's all through there. You got, it goes right through, but this side here is actually a drawer to put whatever. We've just got some barbecue implements and things like that set up in there. Now the kitchen, oh, sorry. Next one was originally came with a uh, hide a bed sofa that the uh, Americans like to call it. And in the sofa thing, seeing it was just Mel and I cruising in this, we never use it as a bed except for once uh, where we had the grandkids actually in that. But we use it as a normal uh, couch. But we found personally, Mel was the one that took up the couch and I sat in the dinette to watch TV. Neither of us were comfortable. It wasn't really as a, a comfortable couch at all. And to be honest, as a bed, it was pretty rough too. It's sort of all over the place. So we pulled that out and it's still here. If you want it, if you buy this unit, the option to take the uh, original sofa couch is there. We've still got it here on the storage under cover. Uh, but we took it out and we managed to get two lazy boys, similar matching to the, uh, the decor in here. And it was the best thing since sliced bread. So much more comfortable in the evening, sitting back watching TV. Uh, and also, you know, like when my wife likes me to rub her feet, I can be able to do that. Coming into the kitchen, we have the range hood over the stoves, typical generic on the Rockwoods. The light comes up, gives a nice ambience. And then you've got the uh, inverted Panasonic microwave. Pretty decent microwave actually, but always remember, with the microwaves, they only operate when you're plugged into 240, unless you install an inverter. Uh, I did not go to, in, to the trouble of installing an inverter. One, when you run a microwave, they're quite hungry on the power, and they really chew into your batteries. But I didn't worry about it, because most of the time we were at campgrounds and things like that. And then the, the uh, range hood, not a bad range hood at all. Now this one's got the four burner gas stove. Found it pretty good. Um, also those times where you are boondocking and you don't have 240, the good old uh, gas kettle. Put it on there, fill it up, make your cup of coffee, not a problem. But like I say, the only thing that really Mel cooked on here was that she would boil up some eggs or uh, poach some eggs and that using it on here. But anything else like bacon and steak and stuff was done out on our Weber. Um, but still, you've got a griller down here. Nice griller, it's not too bad. And then you've got your, your wee little oven, just down here. Nice and clean, as you can see, we didn't really use it. And that, so, uh, and being on a diet, yeah, Mel wasn't allowed to make scones or anything like that. Then coming around here, we've got the uh, sink. She's a twin sink, stainless steel. Comes with the uh, nice little stoppers. That, you drop it down for full seal or you can rotate it around for draining and catching any uh, bits and pieces. And same with the other one. The other one's just up there. But it is uh, another thing to point out. There's two lots of power points up here. Good for putting the kettle here and anything else. Phone charges, whichever. And then that nice little thing. But it also serves as a good cutting board as well. Just here, now this uh, unit comes with 320 watts of solar power. That is uh, the display unit coming from the controller. And put it on and it shall light up the state of the batteries and things like that. The unit does have a battery charger that runs off the 240 when you plug in. That will also charge your batteries as well. But there's 320 uh, watts up on the roof. And found it pretty good actually, not too bad. When boondocking, on a good sunny day, it was pumping 20 amps into the batteries. And 
that plus running on 12 volt we never really sort of flatten the batteries at all um, but other than that yeah it's still a pretty good system you know for the mediocre if you're full timing um, and doing a lot of boondocking that I'd suggest upping your battery storage um, and that way you can utilize like when these batteries are thing and you still got heaps of Sun well hey you know why not have a few more batteries that can get topped up as well you know it's about storage not so much about the thing it's about storage and being able to charge all that up in the given time of the Sun we've got here the automatic system for the air conditioning and the heater it has the built-in heater that heats up from the floor you've got an outlet just here on the floor here just there as well as an outlet over on the, the wall there plus there's one in the bathroom and one in the in a floor system in the bedroom itself but the fridge freezer pretty good size actually she's a uh, three-way fridge freezer automatic energy system so it will actually automatically detect its first port of call it'll always try and do is connect to 240 volt if no 240 volts will come in its next one it'll try and do is 12 volts now when we drive along in the car i've actually got the system hooked up so you can actually supply power to the car from the car to the unit so while you're driving it's actually running off the 12 volts and that's basically it there and then if it doesn't detect 12 volts and it doesn't detect the 240 it then goes to its last port of call its choice and that's run off the gas never been a problem with the system uh, except for one time it come up with an error I turned it off turned it back on and it reset itself and away it goes I haven't had problems at all and that's your adjustment there found that during summertime you'd have to crank that up a bit more but during winter time you know on the, the colder times Usually midpoint's pretty good, you know, with keeping things cold. And not a bad size freezer. Uh, we haven't really felt like we needed more space. Maybe the odd time, it was because of the amount of alcohol we couldn't fit into the fridge. But, hey, alcohol's not the most important thing in the world. The wine is, but yeah. And then the fridge, nice fridge. You know, you've got your veggie drawer down there. Blah, blah. and also you've got a nice little uh, cover there to stop any spills falling down onto your veggies so yeah up here don't think that's a storage tray where some people think oh yeah I can put stuff up there it's not what that is it's actually a tray that catches the condensation uh, water that comes off the cooling fins and drops down there and then goes out to a drain at the back so remember what if you ever put anything in there it's gonna get wet so yeah just bear that one in mind Another drawer there. You got the little uh, treble racks to help stuff from sliding off the shelf as you're traveling along. But all in all, I found this fridge. I'm actually quite impressed with it. And I don't impress easy. And that comes with a little uh, storage latches. So when you're not using the unit and the fridge is turned off and everything like that, as you know, you want to keep the fridge doors open to stop any bad smells and things like that developing. It's got these little latches, click it onto there like that, close it there, and it leaves the door slightly ajar open to help it breathe. A lot of people see these, they come with the fridges and they don't know what they are. It took me a while and I worked it out what it was, so they just sit in there. Other than that, you've got uh, good lighting in here, you've got LED lights all the way around for the main lights, you've got one individual one here for the lights. Same with the uh, dinette there, but also one underneath there. So it lights up quite well, you know. Good cupboard space. We keep all like our plates and glasses and stuff like that. Uh, inside here, it's got the Wi-Fi Ranger. Oh, not the Wi-Fi Ranger, but um, the Wi-Fi system for hooking your phone up to operate the uh, unit. Like that. And then it's got the... Um, system I put up there in relation to that to the whole system uh, has air conditioning and it's ducted through the unit now we'll come on through to the bathroom 
Not a bad size bathroom for two people in it. Mel and I haven't found it cramped. You know, you just take your turns one at a time and you're not getting in each other's way. Uh, not a bad uh, shower. We changed the head on it, went to that one, found it a, a hell of a lot better. It was good, good pressure and things like that from the pump, but it actually gave a, a, a better shower with the water. Wouldn't get anything. It's got the skylight up the top. Not a bad feature, but found it pretty good. And then obviously when you travel along, you close it. See, more linen space. And then there you got the uh, fan. We leave that fan on all the time, so there's always air circulating through the unit, even when we're not using it. The solar power takes care of it. And then you got the travel latch. There. You got more. Keep your bum fodder and all that sort of stuff up there. And basically, cleaning products. And then we got down under the sink here, plus access to uh, the pipe work and the plumbing. There's a 240 volt system set up here for the guys who want their shavers. And all the other bits and pieces that you need. So it's not lacking in space at all. The mirror's not too bad. You know, some ladies like a taller mirror, but that's what you got. Now to the bedroom. It's quite good. You, can, you get the good privacy with these doors closing and opening and everything like that. But into the bedroom, you've got two lights that just go directly over there, you know, at night. Or here's your main light. You've got two of them. Each, every single one of these LED lights, you can actually individually turn off by pressing the little center button in the center. You know, so you can control and have it the way you want. Uh, pretty good size bed. Uh, it's not a full queen bed. Uh, they're a little bit shorter, but they are the width of a queen bed, but just a little bit shorter. With this unit, we found with changing the sheets and things like that, slide the mattress out, put the sheets on, and then slide it back again, to, because of these things being in the way. You've got a drawer here. You know, for all your bits and bobs, your, your books and things like that. Good size wardrobe over there. Uh, we still haven't found us wanting for space. Uh, there's just yeah, so much storage, it's not funny. Uh, and then on the other side, you've got drawers. You can set up your tidies and all that sort of thing in there. Uh, pretty good for storage. And that's the actual uh, third slide out is that wardrobe system. Got storage up here. You know, you can put extra pillows and whatever you like, but it's just storage wall in here. Plus also, you've got a vent up there and it's quite good. You, If you have all the windows closed and that, and then you have that fan going, the only place it can get air from it is through this. It actually creates a nice breeze. Are you putting it on to me <laughs> no. well as you're talking about it yeah but yeah it was sort of aiming down here no matter uh, oh, my arm's getting too yeah. late also uh as you notice there's actually a tv set up in here no that will not be coming with the unit but the wall bracket will stay with the unit ready to for you to put your own tv up on there uh that's just us you know so uh we need that for our new unit but uh, usually TVs are a personal choice, uh, some don't care, some are just happy with one uh, and then you choose what type you like. Um, yeah, Mel calls me a bit of a TV snob, uh, but hey, that's just me. I'm not going to apologise for it. Uh, quite good with the windows, they're the uh, seamless window frames, they wind out left on and like I say, if you leave that fan on and put it on fast, it actually draws and makes a nice breeze, so it's quite good. And then you've got the shutters. You've got the day shutter there, and then the nighttime one comes down as well. And then same up at the uh, front. It's not an opening window up on the front cap, uh, but you can still uh, open it up and get the light in here. Sorry? Fly screens. Yeah. Also uh, noted on this unit, Every single window that opens has a fly screen in it. So you don't have to worry about the creepy crawlies flying in or the mosquitoes and things like that. Even the vents have got fly screens 
every opening to it has a fly screen. So basically, that's our unit. Um, you know, like I said, it's got the solar, it's got uh, the satellite dish and that, the automatic one, makes it easy. And also for those who are sort of curious about the size and things like that, what it's like, with the chairs, here's basically me sitting in the chair, overwatch TV, you know, you can turn the TV around to get a better angle at it. Uh, comfortable as, it's actually a rocking chair type thing. Usually late at night, I'll pull this chair out and just put it there so Mel can think and then they're, they're actually full on recliners. Basically, you know, and nice and relaxed. And like I said, usually at night, that's where I end up getting into my place down on the floor at Mel's feet and give her a foot massage, which she likes. But then, hey, that's what I do for my wife. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, it actually comes with an extension for this bench space. It actually hooks up under here, like so. You got the leg, adjust it down. It's a bit difficult, well not, not too difficult, but you know, you can adjust the height, like so. And you can extend your bench space and things like that. To be honest, <laughs> Mel and I have never used it at all, but it is there in case all of a sudden you get a whole tribe coming around and you need more bench space for preparing food for a big gathering and things like that. But it is there, it comes with the unit, uh, and we just tuck it away behind the chairs, and that's it. But not a bad feature, but for Mel and I, we've never had to use it. There's also uh, a PowerPoint mounted here. I find it good. This is the central place for hooking up to the, for the vacuum cleaner to be able to reach all points around the caravan with the vacuum cleaner, giving them a good clean. But uh, plenty of cupboard space. Got a little thing there. I forgot to mention, there's, you know, your drawers there. You know, for all your cooking utensils. You've got more cupboard space under here for all your pots and pans and so forth. And also another one down here under the fridge so it's not lacking in uh, cupboard space at all it's we found it uh, a great unit Mel and I have had so much fun with the grandkids and that they always add us when's the next time we're going we absolutely love this unit but it is time for us to let it go so we can go up to another level for our plans for the future um, we did have a couple of little issues with it brand new, uh, but that, sent, that got sorted out by the dealer. Not a problem. Uh, they were only minor cosmetic issues, um, but yeah, it's been a fantastic unit. I can't complain. Uh, yeah, it would be sad to see it go because we do like this unit. And I, apparently it was quite a popular model and they stopped making them. So, yeah. But last but not least, before we sign off, show you the lighting outside. There we are. And it makes it brilliant when you're out under the stars and things like that at night while camping away and you're entertaining friends. Put the light on, open up the door, and you can close this. You know, you've got the screen, screen door, and also, a privacy section there but yeah it's been a fantastic unit sad to see it go and I hope it brings uh, whoever chooses to buy it I hope it brings them nothing but joy in that like it has for Mel and I thanks for your time thanks for listening to my spiel uh, yeah happy travels everyone and uh, look forward to whoever takes it for them to uh, have nothing but memories and let us know how it gets on. I'll catch you later. See ya.